don't you envy me that I can take off my mask? Yes. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Um, glad to have you here this morning, and welcome to those of you who are joining us over the, um, the videotape. I'm glad to have you with us as well. Uh, just a reminder to those of you who are worshiping with us this morning, again, these are some of the COVID rules while we're meeting in the hall. Um, if when you're talking, um, I know when we get together, we just want to give each other hugs and talk and laugh and whatever. But um, if you're going in the service, if you could just speak really softly, that would be because uh, um, that would be appreciated. Um, what's the other thing I'm supposed to remind you of? When you leave, uh, if you could go out this door, but if you could keep your distance as you're going out, that would be much appreciated. Is there something else I'm supposed to remind people of? I think that's it today. Barb? 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 What about Barb? Emailing Barb? Barb. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, there, there are yeah, there are announcements. Just a second. Yes. If, uh, for, if, for coming to worship, uh, if you let Barb know that you're planning on coming so we can kind of keep an idea of how many are, we're limited to 25 people. And by way of announcements, Today, uh, we want to wish a happy birthday to Sarah Clancy, who's celebrating her birthday on May the 21st. And today is Les Sorg's birthday. So, Doreen.
rejoice. Let us come together in our call to worship. As uh, it's a responsive call to worship, if you're able to respond with gentle voices. Kind of hard because it's a very joyous song. <laughs> Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our King. Let us join together in musical worship again as we sing, I sing the mighty power of God. to be in all places. Though he is hidden from our sight, enable us to abide in him by the power and grace of the Holy Spirit until his mercy and grace fills your whole creation. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <coughs> Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good to have you back, Zoe and Jason, once again. And um, probably... You guys are, when you're out and playing and whatnot, maybe you're seeing flowers around. Do you see flowers like dandelions and violets and things like that if you're out playing outside? I've run along. Well, this is artificial, but it reminds us of something real. This is called, these are called Easter lilies. Mm -hmm. And My Easter, favorite. Pardon? My Your favorite. favorite. <laughs> Doreen is allergic to them. But, um, Easter lilies have a very important story to tell about us, about, about Jesus. As we look at this, we see, we, we come together and we sing and we're, we're so glad to be in church that we can sing and, and, and celebrate that Jesus is alive. And that's wonderful. And this, this, this lily kind of tells its own story because if you look at the shape of it, it's almost the shape of a trumpet 
which is a musical instrument. So we can, if we're allowed, we can sing about how wonderful God is. And then the color is white, that uh, it's like light. And Jesus said he's the light of the world. So this reminds us of Jesus shedding his light, his, his love around us. And then inside, if these were real, there would be gold inside, yellow, and reminds us of gold, the color gold. And, and, and uh, Jesus came to give us a richness to life and an abundance to life. And gold is a very rich metal, so it reminds us of Jesus, the, the abundance he gave to us. Then there's three little things here. One, two, three. There's, there's some nature word for it. What do you call them? Statements. Okay. And um, that can remind us that of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So that's reminded that way. <clears throat> then there's green. There's green, which reminds us that we, we grow to be more like Jesus as we study about him and pray and read the Bible. The greenness. And then the lily comes from a bulb that was planted in the ground, buried in the ground. Jesus died. He was buried in a tomb, but he became alive again. And so the lily reminds us of the life that we have in Jesus that we can celebrate when we're here. And for those of you who are out beyond these walls, we celebrate the glory that Jesus is alive. We're going to sing again. Come, children, join to sing. And it's printed on the screen. writes, in my former book, Theophilus, he's writing to a person named Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach, and to teach until the day that he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. And after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. Jesus appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so when they met together, they asked him, 
Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus said to them, It's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Thanks be to God for his blessed word. Amen. Today we come to worship and we hear the story of Jesus meeting outside, maybe on a, a day like this with his friends, having a chat with them, when all of a sudden, according to the part that we've read, Jesus starts to rise into the air until they can no longer see him when a cloud hides him from their sight. And as I was reading and reflecting on this passage, it reminded me of the hot air balloon ride that Craig and Angus and I took a couple of years ago. As we sat there and we watched balloons gently rising into the air, and then it was our turn. And uh, except in Jesus' case, Jesus wasn't in a basket under a big balloon. <laughs> and it, it must have been awesome when you think of it to see. Although for some of his disciples, I wonder after seeing Jesus perform so many miracles uh, other times, they just weren't surprised anymore. But still, I wonder if they felt a little sorry seeing their beloved master and friend leaving them. And so today, maybe you're sitting there wondering why this is so important for us to know why we're still in the throes of a pandemic. But it's actually very important. For one thing, it gives us a sense of groundedness. Is that a word? My computer, when I was writing it, put a red line under it saying I made a spelling mistake. But just now, we may feel unrooted. From day to day, sometimes even hourly, we may turn to our news source, whether it's the radio or the TV or a computer, to see what's going on by way of government and health decision making. For example, what time do we have to be in to our, our places of residence? How many can gather at church? What zone are we in now? Will we be able or not able to visit anyone? And it, sometimes it almost feels like it changes hourly. And so we may feel unrooted at loose ends. And maybe it's also felt that way in terms of our faith journey. For instance, a few months ago, we celebrated Christmas, recognizing Jesus coming to earth as a baby. And then soon after that, we were in the season of Lent, with Jesus preparing to go to the cross. And then we knew that Jesus had been crucified, but he had risen from the dead, and he'd been visiting with his friends. And now, and now it seems like we're kind of wandering around, wondering what to do next. What became of Jesus? What became of his friends? Maybe it's like when you're reading a a great novel, you're just really, really into it. And then you come to the last page and it says, to be continued, watch for our next book. The story isn't finished. You want to know what's next. And uh, I know that that happened with some of our ladies here, sharing in multiple sequel books. You know, like the Mitford series that some of you are familiar with. You know, there were phone calls. Have you finished the next book yet? I'm waiting. 
There was anticipation with thinking, we want to know, we want to know what's going on. And so in today's reading then, we're told by Dr. Luke, we understand he was a medical doctor and he was the only Gentile writer in the New Testament. He wrote the Gospel of Luke. And this, this is his second book, the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And in the, in the second book, in the first book we know that Jesus was born, he was crucified, he rose. And this, his second book, at the very end of his first book, he says Jesus was taken up to, to heaven. And so this is his second book that the heavenly king just gives the, the little prelude. Um, he returned to heaven where the scriptures indicate in different places that Jesus is now sitting as king on his heavenly throne. How wonderful. The Lord Jesus who came and walked amongst us, the heavenly king, he's now, he's there on his heavenly throne, back, back in heaven. But this is just the opening passage of the second book. There's more. And this is where knowing of Jesus' ascension is also important to us. As Jesus told his followers before he left to take his place back on his throne in his heavenly kingdom, it is now his followers' mission to carry on his royal work here on earth. And his poor followers, they were still confused, questioning if he was now going to restore the kingdom of Israel. So many world powers think that the greatest thing in life is to have dominance over people. Our history books are full of battles fought and threats over people. And if you read many of the Psalms, they are prayers for victory over and protection from one's enemies, because King David, who wrote so many of those, he was also in, involved with many battles trying to protect the people of Israel. And so he often prayed to God for protection. And we know that some of our most interesting movies or electronic games have some kind of battle going on. And so Jesus' followers still thought that he was going to set up some kind of kingdom like that here on earth. But Jesus said, you will be my witnesses. What does a witness do? In a court of law, a witness tells what she or he has seen, right? They're called as a witness. What did you see? What happened? Well, what did you see? So what had these friends of Jesus seen? They had seen his love for God and for people, all people. In God's eyes, everyone had worth. They had seen Jesus die for their sins against God and others. They had seen him alive again therefore having victory over death. They had a story to tell, a story of hope and victory of God's love over hate. In his book, Preaching During the Revolution, Dr. D. Ray Jordan says, three great themes have constantly challenged the greatest, the keenest thinkers. Number one, do humans have worth? Number two, does the world have meaning? Number three, is God capable of substantiating a positive answer to each of these questions? In spite of Marxism and secularism, multitudes long for a realization of God. Many want the unknown God to portray himself in such a dramatic way that they can be confident of his reality. Some cry out that they are dying, that they are all alone. For such, it is increasingly clear that the Christian faith is no longer optional. It is a requisite for life. This faith makes possible true reverence for life. Again, brought vividly to our attention by Albert Schweitzer, as well as by others who insist that the dignity of man is intrinsically involved in our relationship to God. It is so important for people to know and to have a sense that there is a God who cares and loves them. In the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we see the early believers starting out on this great mission of continuing to bring God's message of life 
through Jesus to the world. This little group started out in Jerusalem and they would go all the way to Rome, I think, by the time the book of the Acts of the Apostles ends. Next Sunday, we'll discover how they did it. So that's book two. Book one that Luke wrote, uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke. Then there's the Acts of the Apostles, those two books. But there is a book three, and that's us. It's a book that is still being written. If we are followers of the Lord, you and I are in book three. When we think of those stained glass windows of old, we may think, oh no, I'll never be good enough to be one of those. You know, the saints that we see up in the windows upstairs or in different churches, I, I'll never be one of those saints. But Dr. Jordan's reflections on humans' need for meaning are still true today. We see our world being torn apart by factions and confusion on who humans are and how to relate to one another. The secular world does not have the answers, no matter how hard they're trying. They just cannot give words of hope, of promise, of something to look forward to. The secular world cannot do that. Secularism has a hopeless perspective. God has the answer. He has given his followers the calling to still live that reality of caring and of hope in this weary old world. Some churches have a sign over their exit door saying, now you are stepping into the mission field when God's people go outside, outside the church doors. But every person we meet needs God's love and he can use us to show it. Somehow, if it's even a smile or a long distance hug. And it's not only outside the church, but it's inside too. All of us need to know God's love. But even book three has a sweet the sequel. Do you recall what happened that day as the disciples stood there looking up? They were joined by two men dressed in white. I think we can assume they were angels. All of a sudden, two men dressed in white standing beside you. Almost like um, uh, Mark over here. He's beige, but imagine dressed in white. Okay. And I wonder if these were the same two angels who spoke to Jesus' friends at the empty tomb. But this time they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven, he will come back in the same way you have seen him going to heaven. I believe it was Arnold Schwarzenegger who said in one of his movies, I'll be back. <laughs> but as you can see, Arnie's words were not really original. Someone far greater than Arnie already made that promise. Jesus is coming back. It has been said on more than one occasion, history is his story. This world had a start with God, God is still in it. We are part of it. And for the Lord's followers, I like what Billy Graham said. Billy Graham said, I've, I've read the last page of the Bible. It's going to turn out all right. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let's sing, Hail the day that sees him rise.
mentioned that next week we're going to find out how Jesus' followers were able to go out and proclaim his good news. It's Pentecost Sunday next Sunday, and uh, it's traditional sometimes if, if people are welcome to wear something red to the worship service. You don't have to, but if you'd like to, you're welcome to do that. Craig, are we able to go on? Or yep. Are we able to go on? Okay. His phone's working, running out of power. Let us join together in our pre-prayer in Christ whose glory fills the skies. that you have created us to be. You give us a commission to be your representatives in the world. You promised us the Spirit to empower us to fulfill your commission. And without you, dear God, we can do nothing. And so we ask that your presence open our hearts and minds so that we, being filled with you, may be what you want us to be. Come to us, O Holy Spirit, and fill us so we may empty ourselves in our serving others, and in our service lead us into a closer and deeper relationship and love with you. O Lord Jesus Christ, we pray today for those courageous men and women who are striving to make life more secure and just for all. Empower the efforts of those who seek peace among the nations who strive to bring opposing factions together at the negotiation table. Bless those who are working hard to preserve the integrity of our environment, who view the world as a precious gift. Heavenly Father, we need to know that you will never abandon us, especially in those moments when we suffer. Your spirit comforts and counsels when we are distressed and disoriented. And so we bring to you and trust the needs of our world, our community, our families, and our inmost selves. We pray for people whose lives are torn by war and famine, the failure of economic systems and political processes. We remember those who are badly housed and who do not receive adequate medical care and education. We lift up those whose lives we touch every day who stand in need of healing or comfort or hope. We ask for a keen awareness of the risen Christ in our own lives, in those areas where we stand in need with our relatives, our friends, and our neighbors. We pray for our church. Grant that the gifts of your spirit may prepare us for the work of ministry in the world. Enable us to communicate the vision of the way things can be under the direction of Jesus. And inspire our witness that all people may know the hope and power of his resurrection. All this we pray in the name of the risen Christ, Jesus our Savior. Amen. Let us conclude our service today by singing Psalm 8. 
God, our God, your glorious name. And I'm sure it would be okay if we all stood up to sing this. I think we can stand up. And just don't leave your space. Don't leave your space. But you can shake it. You can, you can stand up to sing this beautiful, beautiful hymn. <clears throat> I did not know that. Thanks for that. 